This video is going to show you about navigating to the library website and then locating the databases and doing a search inside of a database. So here we are on the My Hugo page and you'll notice on your page you should also have tabs across the top and one of the tabs is for My Team Sites. So if I hold my mouse there I can find library on that list and I'll click that to open the library page. Now that we're on the library page, there's a couple of different ways we can search. You can search in this big box in the middle of the page. However, it searches almost everything. And so sometimes it returns a lot of results and you have a hard time figuring out which of the books and articles are the ones that are really better for your assignment or your paper. Another thing you could do is if you knew the database that you wanted to use, you could click on the database tab and this is a list of all the different places that you can find information. Mostly those articles, magazine and newspaper and journal articles, but other kinds of information also. Now still there's 140 different databases, so you would need to know what database should I click on? And if you knew that, then you could go right there and open it up. But if you're not sure, a great place to go for information from the library page is the resource guides. The resource guides are where the librarians have taken all these different databases and other pieces of information that we know about and organized them by topic. And you can see here the topics are listed and then under each topic are specific pages you can go to to find more information. So I can go to Health Sciences. I see there's three choices. The Health Informatics and the Physical Therapist Assistant pages are specific to those subjects and those programs. But the Allied Health page is a general page with lots of information for the health science and its allied health programs and courses. So you can see what comes up there. And then you can see there's other choices too. So I could look for books, journals. I could get information about agencies and professional organizations, health statistics, medical assisting. And if there's any pages for specific courses, it would be under course guides. But we're looking for our databases. Helpful databases is where we are. And you'll see the box here says databases for locating journal articles. So if you scroll down, you'll see some of the different choices. And there are many of them that are very helpful and useful. But I wanted to show you today Health and Medical Complete because this database covers all major clinical and healthcare disciplines. So if I want to search in the database, I'm going to click the link and it's going to open a new page. And when it opens up, you'll see that this is a typical article or journal database. It's going to give me some choices about what I want to search and how I can limit my search. So let's talk about first about limiting our search. The first thing I always recommend that you do is look for the full text button and check that box. That means that when I run my search, whatever I search for, I'm only going to see on my results page the articles that I can read, open and read on my computer. Sometimes there will be the citations or the summaries for articles that we don't have access to the full article and you want to be able to read what the article says. So the first thing is to check full text. Now, whether you choose any of these other things depends on what you're looking for. Another thing that, that people will often do is click peer reviewed. And that would be especially if you're working on a certain kind of paper or if your professor says you need to have a peer-reviewed source, then you would want to check that box. Now, what does peer-reviewed mean? If you're not sure, there is actually some information here. If it will, There we go. Peer-reviewed is a publication in which articles go through an official editorial process that involves review and approval by the author's peers people who are experts in the same subject area. In addition, oftentimes peer-reviewed articles are research studies or academic articles, and they're not about like how to run 
uh, uh, how to manage a doctor's office or they're not news articles from a newspaper or, or general interest articles that would be in a magazine. So if I check that box, then I'm only going to see that peer reviewed. For this example search, I'm not going to check the box. Okay, so then I could make other choices, but the more choices I make down here, the less articles I'm going to see on my results page. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top and I'm going to think about what I want to search for. Now, if you can come up with a problem statement or a question or a thesis statement, then you can choose your keywords from that statement and search for the keywords. So for example, maybe my um, problem statement is something like um, what are the solutions to the nursing shortage in the United States? So I could search my keyword something like nursing shortage United States. And when I start typing, you notice that it starts giving me suggestions of things I could search. You could choose one of those if that sort of seemed to you to make sense for what you were searching. But this one is fine. We'll click search. So when my search comes up, it's telling me here, again, here's some related searches that I could look for. Um, here are how many results. I still got a lot of results. I'm only searching one database and I almost have 20,000 articles. Then the results are here, 20 on a page. And I'll point out a couple things. One thing you'll notice is even though I didn't choose peer reviewed, I do get these little icons next to each article. So if you hold your mouse there, you'll see this means this is from a trade journal. This means it's from a scholarly journal, which is almost the same as peer reviewed. Not always peer reviewed, but we use it to mean the same thing. So you can see there's a lot of scholarly journals coming here. Another thing that you might want to look for is the year in which the article was published. So 2001 is kind of an old article for talking about this topic. So if I come down here on the side and near the bottom, I can change my date by sliding over to just see the most recent article. So I'm going to update that. And you'll notice too that I went from about 20,000 articles to about 5,500. Now these are much newer. There's a little bit of information here. It's showing me where my keywords were found with the highlighted text. I could go to the full text. I could see the references or the articles that cited this. If I hover over the preview button, I can see more information about this article without opening up the full text or going to the screen there. And a lot of times reading the abstract or the summary will tell me, is this a good article for what I'm looking for? And then you might open that one up. So let's see, how about has the nursing shortage come to an end? That seems like that might answer my question. Is there a nursing so shortage? How can we solve the nursing shortage? So I'm going to open that by clicking the title. It's going to open a page just for this article. So the full text is here. And then also I could get the PDF. I could email, print, or save the article. And you want to come up with some method for yourself of how you want to collect your articles while you're doing your research. I can see the articles that cited this article. If I was looking for more information, I could look for similar documents. I could see some of the ebooks that are related to these topics. I can get the citation for the APA. So if I click here, I want to make sure Okay, now if you're going to copy this, that's fine because it's mostly correct, but then it has some things sometimes it's just a computer that don't belong. So for example, all of these initials about this 
person's credentials are not part of the APA citation. And in APA, we don't use a full first name. We would just use the initial. So if I were to copy this, you know, copy and then paste it into my document, I would want to make sure that I made the appropriate corrections. Okay, so then once we have um, done that, we can collect our articles and so on. Now, if you wanted to save your results, you could come back here to the main results page. And if you want to save like the first page or two, a couple of things you could do. You could copy, I could select all of this and then copy that into another document. And that would be one way I could show my results to my professor. Another thing I could do, if I right click on the screen, I should get a menu and one of the choices should be print. And then if I go there, I can print the whole thing, but what I really need is a document that I can save and upload, like to Blackboard. So if I change my printer and see what my choices are, you may have the option to save as a PDF instead of print. So I can go um, print, change to save as PDF, and save. And then I would save that document with some kind of name so that then I could load it for my assignment. The other thing you can do right here, if, if you're not getting that, um, you could even do save as and you could save the document there, but you see your ch my choice is to save as a web page. So it's not going to work exactly the same way, but that's another way you could get the file to save. So that's a quick, quick overview of going to the library, selecting a database, and running a search. If you have any questions, please contact the library, and we're happy to walk you through um, some more searches and more examples.